so today we're at the Powerhouse Museum at the Space Exhibit and I'm with Lisa, a radio astronomer. So what do you do as a radio astronomer? Well, you know what optical astronomy is, right? Looking through a telescope. Like normal, normal yeah, ones? Yeah, normal astronomy, yeah. looking up through a telescope and taking a picture of the stars and people have yeah. been doing that for 400 years now. Yeah. Um, but about 100 years ago, mm -hmm. people realised, by accident actually, mm -hmm. that space emits radio waves as well. And we can't tune it in like a normal radio and hear music or anything like that. But what we can do is, is point a radio telescope, which is just like a radio aerial. Right. And we can use electronics to amplify the waves because they're very, very weak. Mm -hmm. And we can make pictures of space. And you look up in radio uh, waves and you can see galaxies and stars and planets just the same as you can with light. Right. So I, as a radio astronomer, study uh, the universe and try and understand it using radio telescopes. Right. So what does a radio telescope look like? Because I know they're different from the normal yeah, ones. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Have you seen satellite dishes on houses? Maybe you've got one or... Uh, like a TV Yeah, one? TV satellite yeah, yeah. dish. Exactly like that. It's exactly okay. the same thing. Yeah, so that just... Re it's like a mirror. That just reflects uh, the radio waves that are coming in from space uh, onto this. And this is a camera. This is a radio camera. Um, so you know what a, a CCD is, a charge couple device? It's, it's a little device inside your camera that measures, it's got all the tiny pixels on it and it measures uh, how, how much light is hitting uh, the camera. So that, that's how you take a picture in your phone or your, your, your digital camera. Now this one is, is pretty much the same. Uh, you've got a non-conducting surface, this bright green, and then you've got these squares of a conducting surface here. So these essentially just metal and uh, when the radio wave hits this, radio is an electromagnetic wave, it's got a moving electrical field and when a moving electrical field interacts with a conductor, it generates a voltage. And the voltage can be measured uh, by the electronics. These are uh, devices that measure uh, the voltage. And then the wires go down the back and we measure um, the picture using that. This has been developed by the CSIRO in, in Australia and right. it's a new type of device. This is the future of what telescopes are going to look like? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think most telescopes are going to have one of these. Um, within about 10 years. So what exactly is the SKA? What does it stand for? SKA, yeah. uh, Square Kilometre Array. Right. Uh, now an array is a group of objects, so an array of telescopes is a group of telescopes. And oh. we're going to build <laughs> thousands of telescopes. Uh, in fact, so many that the total number, uh, the total surface area will be a square kilometre, hence Square oh. Kilometre Array. Okay. So that's what SKA means. Right. So it's just a type of radio telescope that uses hundreds or even thousands of telescopes. Yeah. Uh, all looking at space at the same time, right. all hooked up by uh, their own mini internet. So you use fiber optic cables to yeah. hook up the signals to a computer and uh, you can generate a hugely detailed, hugely sensitive picture of wow. space using this immense, vast field full of telescopes. Right. So it's so, a pretty cool concept. Yeah. Um, so how big exactly is it? Um, we're still designing it at the moment, but what it's supposed to be is uh, around a million dipole antennas. So these are telescopes. Dipole. A dipole is, is a wire, yeah. um, and it can be straighter. It can have crosses across it. So like a TV aerial uh, on the roof. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so one of those. And it can measure the strength and direction of radio waves and even polarization right. of the radio waves. Uh, and those are going to measure things in the very distant universe, mm -hmm. just things that happened after the Big Bang. Wow. So very, very early on, before there were any stars or galaxies. Mm -hmm. So those are going to be spread out over probably tens or hundreds of kilometres right. of the Western Australian desert. Oh, okay. A <laughs> remote WA. Right. And the reason we're out there is because it's a um, radio quiet environment. There's uh -huh. no sort of cities or towns or TV stations to uh, interfere yeah, with yeah. The, the signals. The other part of the telescope is um, a huge uh, landmass covered in these dish telescopes, yeah. so these satellite dish type ones. Uh, and those will be spread out over about 3,000 kilometers wow. in Africa. Uh, and also <laughs> okay. a huge field of telescopes over tens of kilometers in Australia right. um, that will be able to survey the sky really quickly mm -hmm. and show us um, a whole picture of the universe and the wow. millions of galaxies within it. So all of that together is the Square Kilometer Array. It's a huge project yeah. and, and 10 countries are involved around the world. Wow. How do you guys process all this information? It's really hard. Uh, each yeah. telescope is individually uh, studying the sky, so you could actually make a picture with each one of them individually. Wow. But instead of doing that, um, you collect the information from each telescope and you combine it in, in a giant computer, and that's the right. brain of the telescope. Right. Uh, so it's like a huge, huge brain that's doing um, quadrillions of calculations. Wow. Absolutely, uh, if you get the number one and 18 zeros, 
that's how many <laughs> operations it will have to do per second, wow. yeah. calculations in the computer. And uh, all the data will be streamed through a dedicated network of fiber optic cables, and that will be underground. Uh, and the amount of cable that will be need, yeah. needed is, uh, would stretch about twice around the Earth. <laughs> Um, so it's about wow. 80,000 kilometers of cable yeah. um, and all the information will be streamed through those cables and the amount of information will be about 100 times the global internet traffic of the whole world. So like everything, Facebook, Yeah, Instagram, everything, all the, all the emails better. you've ever sent, everyone's ever shared, videos, everything, wow. all that information added up. Our yeah. telescope will generate more information than that. So it's an absolutely huge project yeah. uh, and it's really cool because um, it's driving technology companies to come up with solutions for us to build better computers, to build better networks, to build better timing devices, uh, electronics, amplifiers, radio receivers, yeah. and the technologies that are developed through the telescope project will, will have other applications to help people in other ways. So in our everyday life, we're going to be influenced by all these big science projects by real scientists? Yeah, that's right. I mean, right. like the space uh, missions, they really developed a lot of technologies. And similarly, our telescope project will develop a huge amount of technologies to, right. to spin off to everyone. What do you think the um, SKA or what this project is going to do for everyday life? Well, I think one of the most exciting things is that we don't know. Sometimes you can't predict right. what will be invented. Um, you know, a lot of things are discovered by accident, uh, like penicillin, famously, one of the mm -hmm. most important drugs, drugs to uh, eradicate disease. So, um, you know, some of the things that have spun off in the past from radio astronomy yep. uh, include Wi-Fi. You know, you yeah. use Wi-Fi every day, right? Yes. I mean, we all use it a lot. I've got yeah. a little tablet device and yeah, I'm always so. wandering around the house reading the paper yeah. or whatever. You know, so, so Wi-Fi sprung from a CSIRO scientist studying black holes. And, you know, he was a smart guy, he was an engineer and, and an yeah. astronomer. And, um, you know, he, he developed a technique to uh, transfer signals wirelessly without um, interference across oh. the room. And the reflections have been a problem in the past. It had been quite a poor quality right. of uh, signal transfer. And he, he developed a way to do that much, much better. And that enables us all now to use Wi-Fi. Right. So, you know, a spin-off unexpectedly from, from astronomy, you might think, you know, what have black holes ever done for us? Well, <laughs> in fact, they've given us Wi-Fi. Wow. The SK is so large, and you're taking photos way out into the universe. Yeah. Do you think you're going to find aliens? Oh, well, that's a good question. So how many, how many, planets do we know with life on them? It's just ours so Just far? ours, right? Yeah. So we've only, if a scientist, if you ask a scientist how likely is it that we'll find aliens, um, well we've only found one planet with life on it so far. Yeah. But the truth is we haven't looked very far. So we just built this telescope called Kepler. Uh -huh. And Kepler allows us um, to see planets around nearby stars. So we've right. discovered hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new planets just recently. Wow. So now that we know in our, at least our neighborhood, mm. uh, and the, the nearest few thousand stars, almost every star has planets around it. Wow. So if you take that further out through the galaxy, which is, has 100,000 million stars in it, you know, it's pretty likely that yeah. there'll be 100 billion uh, planets wow. in, our, in our galaxy. And there are hundreds of thousands of millions of galaxies. So how many <laughs> quadrillion planets are yeah. there in, in the universe? We, we think there's likely to be life out mm. there. I think there's likely to be life out there. Right. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us today, Lisa. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>